Just a quick heads up, stick around till the end of the review because we are going to be giving away this microphone. This isn't a promotion or anything. Samson didn't send me an extra one specifically for a review. I'm just running out of room. <laughs> I got too many microphones that fulfill this purpose, including my primary microphone, so. I'm just gonna give this one away. Okay, so Samson sent the Q9X for review. Um, I have some thoughts, but a little bit about Samson as a brand before we begin. They make affordable hardware. I don't know of any Samson products that go beyond $200. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I couldn't find any on the website, which is cool. There's there's nothing wrong with some budget kings in the microphone space. We definitely need that. A side note, holy Samson. Update your website. What, what is this monstrosity of a website? I've seen 2003 chat rooms that look more contemporary than this. And is she singing? Samson, is this just a stock photo that you photoshopped your microphone onto? Because that one definitely is. You are a multi-million dollar company. You should not be able to use stock photos in your website. And look at that Twitter logo. That's like from 2007. One thing that I'll say about Samson as a company is they really do have great build quality for the price. And we'll get into that a little bit further into the review, but I've gotten on them for some of their technical measurements and technical specs, specifically the Samson CO1. While it felt amazing in your hand, really solid, better than anything else in the price, its self noise was intense. I've seen it reported as over 23 dBA, I clocked it at well above 20 dBA, and it was one of the only microphones I've ever tested that whenever I plugged it in, I just heard the self noise. Usually you have to add a lot of compression, you have to do an EQ curve for a voiceover, but it's generally not a huge problem unless you're either in a vacuum doing voiceover, there's no background music or anything like that, or you're building a large production all layering that same microphone over and over again until that noise floor becomes much more apparent. But with the CO1, I plugged it in and I heard the hiss almost instantly. The loudest self noise I've ever heard rendering that microphone near unusable to me. It's fine for calls, fine for discord, but anything related to the professional field, I really dissuaded a lot of people from using it. So I've kind of dragged Samson's name through the mud on this channel before, but at least they were good sports about it and they reached out for another review. They wanted another shot with their Q9X, which by the way, is their XLR version to their USB XLR combination mic, the Q9U. So first things first, credit where credit is due. Samson continues to deliver on the physical build quality of their microphone. This thing feels like a tank and it will survive the apocalypse as is the case for mini dynamic microphones. It does feel very premium and it lives up to the $150, $140 price. And if you snap on the pop filter, which I'll put back on again, it does look like an SM7B, which I know a lot of people might care about that. And when you take it off, it has some design cues from the RE20. Makes sense, those are like the big boys in the space, the two kind of in-game microphones for broadcast. It's like the Yankees or the Red Sox or Pepsi and Cola or like McDonald's in any local business economy. You have to pick one, you can't have both. <laughs> Anyways, it feels great. It's a solid build quality. Beyond maybe the yoke attachment, which feels a little bit plasticky and moves a little bit, kind of a clippy sound. Yeah, it feels like a $140 product. But historically, Samson fails to deliver on the audio front, in my opinion. So we'll sub in two different microphones that I'm sure this mic is competing against, that being the Shure MV7 and of course the SM7B. And you can make some of your own conclusions, but here are my conclusions. The frequency response is very mid-range heavy. It gives you a very warm broadcasty tone, and I will say compared to something like the SM7B, it does have a more evened out top end, just the right amount of presence thrown in to add a little bit more clarity. It is still very mid-range forward. And that's something I find the SM7B kind of lacks is that top end. Something that I think my voice really needs. And I think that's one of the reasons I'm not a big fan of the SM7 on my voice. Uh, and actually on that note, 
Look, there have been plenty of reviews on the channel where the SM7 in a blind demo gets a less than favorable review. And I often find that in the comments, the SM7, people go, oh, actually, I think that's actually my least favorite. I think it's important to note that this is on my voice. The SM7 is a terrible choice for my vocal register. It makes me sound nasally with like a blanket over my voice. It's not very complimentary. But please don't immediately assume that of all voices. And it's easy to power, thankfully. 57 decibels to get around nominal levels. And that's not too different from the SM57, which to me is kind of the benchmark for an acceptable level of gain on a dynamic microphone. The mid boost is also a welcome function, which does add a little bit of clarity. So here is the Q9X with the mid boost off. And here is the Q9X with the mid boost on. Definitely more presence and uh, just a little bit uh, more solid vocal register. I much prefer this setting than if I were to just turn that off. Again, a little bit faster. I'm going to keep talking using the same sentence, but then if I just turn the mid boost on mid sentence, hopefully you can see it's just a little bit more solid there. And um, that's, that's about where I'm going to have to stop for the positives. First off, this thing has a very high self-noise. And I know what you're thinking, Ricky, this is a dynamic microphone. Why are you, why are you even bringing up self-noise? Dude, they put it on the website. <laughs> I gotta talk about it. This microphone has a self-noise of 19 dBA. That it's almost as much as the f***ing CO1. The condenser microphone. Thanks for being honest, I guess, about your self-noise measurements, Samson. Not only that, I find that the microphone has really poor shock absorption. Any nasty bangs or typing are probably going to end up in your microphone. Handling noise is also very intense. Do not touch this microphone during a broadcast. I will do the annoying microphone YouTuber thing now where I like tap on the mic. <laughs> I can't help but feel like an when I do this. Like if you're the product designer and you're watching this review, I, I'm sorry. Just don't, don't hate me. I'm sorry. Like just some kid in his bedroom tapping on your microphone and drawing some negative conclusions based off of that. I'm sorry. People want to see it, but I know it. I know. This microphone is pretty poor at plosive rejection. Pretty poor, pretty poor at plosive rejection. So you kind of need to put that big pop filter on. Pretty poor at plosive rejection. And doing so will dilute the frequency response of this microphone and you'll lose that top end balance that I mentioned prior. This leads to a muddier tone than I would like to see. Usually I think adding pop filters is kind of a necessary thing and often it doesn't impact the tone too much. The SM7's filter is pretty thin and yes you do hear added top end whenever you take this filter off but it is workable with the filter on. This is a, a thick boy. This is really a, a thick pad. You probably lose three, four, even five decibels whenever you put this on in the top register in order to conserve plosive response and that leads to a much more mid-ranged muddy tone on the Q9X than I would like to see. Its off-axis rejection is also pretty poor. It has plenty of coloration on the side and if I go to the back of the microphone, it's not really that great at rejecting the back either. Man, I'm sorry, Samson, but in my opinion, it's just still not there yet. I would go with the Shure MV7X instead, which seems to be what you named this microphone after, and I can't help but think it's because of SEO optimization, ending up in that search engine algorithm with the MV7. Which leads me into my next point. So let's zoom out a little bit, and let's take another look at the website, because I think we can derive a bigger conclusion based on the website. Samson is big. You can find them at a lot of retail stores, including like Best Buy. And I hate to say it, but I think it's clear that they're falling behind in more avenues than just one. And that's clear from where you buy the Samson products. It's clear from the website. It's, it's all a message that the brand, whether they mean to or not, is conveying about themselves. And right now they're not conveying a lot of good things. They're conveying that their brand is kind of archaic, both in their product design and how they pitch and present themselves. I would look into redesigning your hardware. 
Think of the contemporary content creator. Challenge the aesthetics of your product with new industrial design based upon contemporary issues. Look at streaming hardware. You have to remember now that we're in a world where the microphone is on camera and is more than just a tool. It's part of your set. People care a lot about that. I would look into building internal DSP and software and really integrate this microphone into the experience of streaming, broadcasting, podcasting. You could build controls on the microphone like the mic I'm assuming that you're competing against. I really think the fundamentals of how you design products needs to be adjusted, which I know is pretty brutal to say. Otherwise, I think companies like Lewitt or Elgato and definitely Sure are going to keep eating your lunch. And stop photoshopping photos on your website. Why would you even do this one? Why would you photoshop your logo over the... I feel like I've been pretty brutal these last videos, haven't I? The Lewitt Connect 6 didn't get that positive of a review. I criticized the Soyuz 1973's price point and their marketing. The Sure MV7 video, I criticized you as a consumer. Is this like my evil era? Okay, we'll end with a blind microphone voiceover. We'll have the Samson, nope. We'll have the Samson Q9X. We'll have the Shure MV7. We'll have the Shure SM7B. Uh, and for fun, we'll also have the RA20 and good old SM57. You can pick your favorites based off of my voiceover. Would you rather only eat grass for the rest of your life or only be able to talk after sucking in a bunch of helium? Would you rather only eat grass for the rest of your life or only be able to talk after sucking in a bunch of helium? Would you rather only eat grass for the rest of your life or only be able to talk after sucking in a bunch of helium? Would you rather only eat grass for your entire life or only be able to talk after sucking in a bunch of helium? Would you rather only eat grass for your entire life or only be able to talk after sucking in a bunch of helium? All right, well, that's the review. Aren't you excited to win this microphone that I just criticized for the whole video? Look, I'm just, I'm running out of room. Might as well share tech even if it's not something I, I love. Make sure you're subscribed, leave a comment, please like the video and follow me on Instagram. That's so I can DM you if you win. If you don't follow, I won't be able to contact you, so please do that. Also, people are pretending to be me in the comments. So if I reply to you saying that you won the contest in the comments, that is not me. I didn't think we'd have to deal with this at this subscriber count, but we do. So whether it's taking you to a Telegram number or not, fake. And then you could win this kind of mediocre microphone. Anyways, if you'd like to follow me on Instagram, you can at Real Audio Haze. If you'd like to work on a project with me, you can email me at realaudiohaze at gmail.com.